right, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox, and today I'll be showing you how to set up this stylized dynamic snow scene. At the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to stack any objects you want inside of this. You'll be able to affect the snow particles, their size, their variation, etc. Um, and you'll also be able to control the directionality of the snow. So for instance, if I were to tip this bike over, you'll actually see the snow pile up on the top side of that bike rather than just stick to the placement you currently have it. All right, let's get started. So for this setup, I'm gonna want a few objects. Uh, feel free to grab whatever you want. I'm going to grab a couple objects out of our city pack. So I'm gonna grab this Chicago hydrant. I'm going to grab this post office box. And then um, inside of this bike rental station, uh, there's some bikes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one of the bikes outside of that. So crack it open, pull bike one out, and then I'll just delete the rest of the station. So now I have my set of objects and I'm also going to pull them outside of the hyper nerves and just get rid of those because we'll uh, smooth this all at the end. So I want to set them up in the scene how I would uh, like them to be oriented. So I'm going to take this bike, much like I had in my scene prior that you just saw. I'm going to kind of tilt it over a little bit. There we go. I have the bike kind of leaning against the post office box. And I'm going to take this Chicago hydrant, maybe put it a little bit in front of this post office box. Turn that around so we get the front of it. All right, that's looking pretty good. Um, so the main thing you want to do with all of your objects for the beginning of the setup is you're going to want a connect object. And this will allow um, the snow we're about to put onto this to realize all of these objects are the same and then you can you know, move these around however you wish in the scene and the snow will affect them proportionally. So for my connect object, I'm just going to go into Fong mode and say manual. Uh, that'll just allow us to make sure there's nothing uh, too crazy going on with the welds in this object and leave it at point 0.1, that's totally fine. There we go, we have our object. And then from there, I want to grab a cloner object. You can grab whatever object you want and put it inside your cloner. I have found a sphere works the best. And then on that sphere, I'm gonna scale it down and set it to eight segments. Drop it inside of the cloner and then click on our cloner. And we're going to change this from linear mode to object mode. And we are going to drag the connect object inside of that object mode. So you'll start to see these little spheres pop up here. Um, we want distribution to stay as surface, but we want a ton more objects. So I'm going to change the count to about 5,000. So now we got snow all over the place, right? And this doesn't look like snow at all. It just looks like uh, our objects have a weird fungus on them. So the first part of this is we want to make this look like it has more direction. So I'm going to go to MoGraph and I'm going to grab a shader effector. So because I had the cloner selected, it will immediately apply the shader effector into our effectors tab on our cloner. If you did not do that, it's really easy to just go to the effectors tab, grab the shader and drag it in. And then I wanna to go to my shader effector and I want to turn off scale. So there's really no position scale or rotation affecting this. And down here, I wanna turn on visibility under the other section and make sure alpha strength is on. And then deformer, leave the same and go over to shading and then shader, we're going to grab a pretty old thing from Cinema 4D. If you go over to effects and then grab a terrain mask. So terrain masks are basically a black and white mask that Cinema 4D understands as directional in Z space versus a gradient, which is much more linear and laid across something. Terrain mask is, um, it has a minimum altitude, uh, maximum altitude, a slope, etc. Um, and most importantly, it has a direction. So you'll see down here in direction, it's at plus Y right now. If I were to switch this over to negative Z, you get the objects all on the negative Z coordinates. No, negative Y, it's all on the underside, but we want it at positive Y right now because we want our snow to look like it's building up from the top as it falls down. So you can see it's a really cool um, old school effect, but it does the job super well in terms of directionality. And then I'm gonna grab a floor object just to put this in and ground it. Um, if we start rendering something, we wanna color this floor. And then I also want a snow build up around the ground. So I'm just going to grab a landscape. 
And I'm not gonna do anything too crazy with this. I'm gonna pretty much leave it how it is. And as you can see, it already does a nice job. The post office box is sticking down inside of it. And I'm just going to grab that and drag it and put it into our connect object. So you can see right away, anything you put inside of this connect object will have these spheres immediately cloned onto it. And also what's really cool, since it's in this connect object, the cloner sees it as one big object. So if I start moving this bike around, it just stays right with it. And again, since we've applied that terrain mask that has a directionality, if I rotate this down to the ground, you'll see they're all shifting rapidly. Now, all of the particles are on top of the bike because again, this side of the bike is facing upward. So all of our particles are going to orient that way. You can get a pretty cool effect and uh, do a lot of R&D that's pretty lightweight before you turn this into a heavier scene when you start connecting all of the snow together. So I'm just gonna undo this, go back to where we were. And then clicking on our cloner object again, I just want a little bit of size randomness in this. So I'm going to go over to MoGraph, Effector, Random, and then I'm going to turn off position, but scale, I'm going to turn on, click Uniform Scale, and just put this up to like 0.5. So you can see we have a little variance in the scale. We have some large ones, we have some small ones. Uh, and they'll just change this up a little bit. So we won't have such uniform snow when we lay the mesh on top of this. I'm going to click the cloner again. And what I want here is I don't want this just perfect square um, around this. I want kind of that nice fall off of a snow pile as I had in this scene. What we can do here is use fields. So I'm going to go over to MoGraph Effector Plane once again. Um, currently positions on, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn on scale uniform scale again, and this time do negative one. So negative one will basically scale all of these objects away because it's uniformly scaling this right now. But if I go over to fall off and I go over to linear field and add a, let's do a capsule. So I have this nice capsule. It's getting this really nice fall off. It's obviously inverted, which isn't what we want. So to fix that, we just wanna go over to remapping and check invert. That way it's just these particles in the center that are showing. And I'm just gonna take this uh, top radius and bottom radius inside of the capsule field and just position it out to where I want. This will become a lot more useful later when we're trying to put an actual mesh on this snow. But for now, you can just see really nicely how it's working and your scene is pretty lightweight. I'm not actually sure why it's red right now. That must be something in the field. Oh, color mode. Okay, no color, no remap. There we go. So again, we've set our remapping allows us to taper off the snow really nicely. And now let's get to uh, meshing this snow together. So I'm going to just hide this capsule field so it's not visibly in the way. You could do a few things here. If you want to use metaballs or something like that, that works. But if you have newer versions of Cinema 4D, you have something here called Volume Mesher and Volume Builder. So I'm going to select the Volume Builder and then stack this cloner inside of it. And that will immediately create this kind of low res pixeled look. It gets a little more heavy at this point, but still pretty usable. And I'm going to change this voxel size to something more like four. So the voxel size, as it goes up, it kind of gets wider and more blurry. As it goes down, it gets tighter to the original object. So it's trying to get closer to our original sphere size. Okay, and then from here, I'm going to put it inside of a volume mesher. So I'm gonna grab a volume mesher and stack this volume builder inside of that. So now you actually start getting a mesh that ties all of this together. The scene again gets a little bit heavier. I'm just gonna create a white material to throw this on here so we can really tell the difference that this is snow. Turn this up just making this fully white so we can see what's going on. All right, so that is our basic setup. And from this point, you can start messing with all of the volume builder settings, all of the volume mesher settings, your cloner settings, what objects are inside that cloner and that capsule field, and it will all affect this accordingly. And again, what's so great about this is, you know, if I start messing with all of these objects inside of this connect object, Let's just shift this upwards randomly. All of the snow is going to reorient itself uh, in the correct positions as you change the objects. 
but it's pretty dynamic as you move stuff around. And again, you don't really have to have uh, X particles. You don't have to um, build some fluid simulation. This just works pretty well. One thing I'd start to mess around here with is in Volume Builder, you know, we set this voxel size to four, but a thing that's really helpful here is something called SDF Smooth. So if I click that, click SDF Smooth, it all goes away randomly. Um, but if you change this down to, let's say 50, you can start seeing it took all of those individual particles and is trying to smooth and mesh them together. So as it gets more smooth, you know, you'll probably need more particles. So if I go over to my cloner, change, or actually let's just go to our sphere and scale that sphere upwards so it becomes a larger object. There we go. So you start seeing, okay, now our object we're cloning is way larger and in our volume builder, we have this SDF smooth on. Um, we can get this way more smooth effect rather than kind of that individual particle system we were having before. So that is pretty much it. Um, again, I suggest with the volume measure and volume builder, it's pretty heavy, so turn that on towards the end. You can work in volume builder pretty easily uh, without having too much lag time. Uh, if I turn volume builder off, it's really smooth and easy to work within the scene since it's just cloner objects. All right, that's pretty much it for this setup. Hopefully this helps you. Uh, if you'd like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would mean a ton. We're going to continue to put out tutorials. We're shooting for one a week. Um, and if you're interested in a tutorial on how I did this rendering, maybe how the snow texturing works, uh, leave a comment down below. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D model packs, head on over to thehappytoolbox.com. We have over 500 models. We just added this plants pack. People seem to really enjoy this one. And we also have a freebie section, which we definitely will be adding more models to. So keep an eye on that. All right, I'll see you next time.